He took me home that first night from the MYF meeting, and uh, I think, I, I don't think he kissed me that night. I can't remember for sure, I don't think he did. But we sat out in the car and visited and talked, and I remember my brother-in-law, Herman Kester, was uh, staying at my mom and dad's that weekend, and when I went in, he, I, he asked me what I thought about the young man that had brought me home, and so I told him several of the things about Lee that I really did like, and the next morning, I got up and he had told everybody, all my sisters and mother and dad, I think Phyllis has found the one she's going to marry <laughs> because he realized right then that I had fallen in love with the, with the man that I had just been brought home from my, my MYF meeting. So I really think that Lee won me over the very first night he brought me home. And uh, we dated, I went to Western uh, that year and so we dated on weekends. And one weekend when I was coming home on the train, my sorority mother, who was Margie Boster, and I were riding together on the train, and uh, she was getting off at, Pal at uh, uh, Camp Point, and I was getting off at Paloma. Anyway, she said, I have a date with my boyfriend, Lee Farlow, uh, tonight, and my eyes about dropped, and my teeth about fell out, because I had a date with him the next night. And so, anyway, she got off at Paloma, and I rode on to Camp Point, and I sat there, and I laughed in my chair, thinking about, He's got a date with Margie Bosser, Margie Moore at that time, and I've got one the next night. And the man across from me looked at me like as if that young woman must be really out of her, <laughs> out of her head. But I never will forget the look. He looked at me like as if she must be crazy. But I had a date the next night, and I had a wonderful time. And we dated off and on all that year while I was at college. Every weekend when I would come here home, I, we'd have a date. And uh, he gave me uh, my diamond on May and uh, a cedar chest. and. Uh, we were married in November and uh, uh, had a, a fairly large wedding compared to some people. We had, you know, my brothers and sisters and his brothers and sisters and, and uh, a couple of his, nep uh, his niece and my nephew or vice versa of my, anyhow, for Bring Bear and Flower Girl. And uh, like I say, then we moved back to uh, Camp Point and lived out north of Camp Point because at that time, uh, Dale and uh, their mom and dad were living here. Anyway, so we lived that first year out north of town in a farm home. Then his brother decided he wanted to get married and it was always their will growing up that Lee would have this house and Dale would have the house out north of town where we were living. So after all of our uh, rigorous redoing the floors and redoing the bathroom and everything out there, we had to move out of that house and move here. And this house was a disaster. It still had the old kitchen stove <laughs> and the old pump sink and I didn't have this room wasn't on and the windows were all different there was a little porch on the uh, east side of the house it wasn't a house that I wanted to come to I had my house all fixed up out north of town I didn't want to leave it but now thinking back I am so glad because if we were living out there I would have had miles of gravel road to travel and every time I travel in the town and here I have a nice black top to go to town every I'm ever going to run into town. So it all worked out like it was planned to be. I'm here and not out there. And uh, like I say, it was, we've had a happy life. The Lord has blessed us. My dad was very, very strict. Uh, in fact, I always, the, my brothers and sisters always said that he babied me because I was the youngest one. And at times I felt that was true because he was very hard on my brothers and sisters and uh, kind of let me do whatever I wanted to do. Mother was a very, very conscientious mother. Like I say, she taught us how to sew, how to cook, to be good students at school, to study and things, and uh, mom was a good mother. And uh, a, like a stay-at-home mother, because she was always there. And our house was a large house. We had like a pantry that had shelves and shelves of food that we canned, and a big stove with a water, uh, thing on each side so you could get the hot water out of it. We took our baths and little square bathtubs, my brother and I together, and you used the same water over and over. And, and so we had an outhouse where we went to the, to do our bathroom problems and uh, whatever. We didn't have an indoor bathroom ever uh, on that farm. And so, uh, uh, like I say, it's a lot different than what people nowadays are used to, but it was a good life and we learned to respect others and we never had any bullying or 
being mean to talking about people, it was very, very good. Dairy was an important part of our life. Lee really didn't have the acres, the thousands of acres that some farmers had to make all their money on grain. So if we hadn't had the dairy business, we would have had to have gotten more acreage as far as grain uh, in order to raise five kids. We had to get up early and get the milking done before we went to school. We had three restaurants and two... Two stores. Uh, stores. Just, yeah. They rode a pony to school, didn't you, right? Yeah, we rode a pony. The first one to go home had to ride the pony to go get cows in. <laughs> I uh, was able to do a lot of things on the farm that I enjoyed so much when I was little because uh, being the firstborn and being a girl, dad still wanted me to come down and help. So every day after school, I got to go um, get the cows from the pasture, which is where um, Ted and Sarah live now. So I would go up the hill and follow the cow trail and go back till I found the cows and call, call them in. and then they would follow me, all 30, 40, 50 of them. And so I'm pretty sure as a six-year-old that was a big power trip because uh, I uh, felt like I was really helping too, helping dad when he needed me. And then after we, I would bring the cows in, then I would go into the milking barn, which was the old milking barn that we first had. And it was my job to dip up, um, scoop up the, the correct amount of um, oats and barley and vitamin type little tablets, pills uh, for the cows to have. And of course the hayloft, and there were you know the tree houses and so many fun things to do on a farm. Mom and dad uh, loved gardening, mom loved flower gardening, so I was outside doing that a lot too, and, and I still like to do that to this day, so. that we did around the farm uh, revolved around both recreational and work um, related items. I must admit that I really enjoyed the work part of it because as we got older, especially as our, in our teenage years, we had cousins that were nearby and those cousins got to come over and help us work in the fields. I remember we had competitions where although dad and my uncles in, intended for us to get a lot of work done, we decided it was a good time to have some exercise and some competitions. So for example, when we were baling straw, we would stack normally four high with one on top to tie the wagons together. And we would sometimes get them six, seven, eight high just to try and stack the wagon as high as we could and see how high we could throw the bales without throwing them off the back of the wagon. And uh, as we had guys, one guy would drive the baler, the tractor for the baler, and another guy would be on the wagon. Um, we would be giving different kinds of signals to each other. We would be running the baler faster than we probably should have to try and speed things up. And it was, we turned work into a lot of fun so that my memories of the farm would never seem to be laborious about work. It was always, we were figuring out ways to have a good time even doing the hard work. I loved having so much room to work with and being a kind of a guy that my favorite sport was the sport that was in season, so Dad gave me permission to go out in the south pasture. And if it was track season, then I got to mow a three-lane track out in the pasture that I could run track on. He allowed me to bring some sawdust in, and we made a sawdust high jump pit. Um, had a place for a triple jump or a high jump. And a uh, baseball field, I got to mow lines for the, for the uh, diamond. So I loved living on a farm for all those things. Grandpa was always the slave driver. Uh, when we always had work to do, never a time to just really goof off. I can always remember that Stan and I would used to try to get away to play on um, many bikes or motorcycles or something, and we'd ask uh, Dad, uh, "What do we have to do today?" And his answer was always, "Oh, not that much. Just." clean the holding pen, bed the free stalls, put out hay to the cows, take out silage, clean out the holding pen. We just always had an answer with the hard things to do. So the only way we really got to have fun was to just take off and sneak away. So that was our way of, of 
complain was to try to get away when, when he was always trying to push. Um, Mom always had all the meals. Uh, we, always, we always stopped for, for break. we had breakfast, we'd go out and do chores. We'd come in for breakfast because we'd be hungry. Then we would have noon lunch, of which that was the other catch. We'd try to catch Dad taking a short nap um, at lunchtime, and then Stan and I would sneak out <laughs> while he was taking a nap, or we would sleep one or the other. So that was our way of getting away. And then Mom always had supper uh, at night, so there was always a time that we we took for you know a time to eat take a break and be together at, at mealtime, so that was always the case. Lee was Outstanding Farmer of the Year, plus that he was Illinois Holstein uh, Association top guy and, and he won a couple awards and we got a couple trips for that and uh, like I say he, he did very very well with his dairy business. It wasn't just doing the milking, he went ahead and, and, and became overall. And, and uh, like I say, he showed cattle at the fair and uh, helped the 4-H kiddos with their, showing their cattle at the fair. You know, raising little calves was always one of the best memories as far as laying down in the straw plane with calves like their pets. Um, even the cows, taming all the cows down, you know, you think of a 1,500 pound cow, and some people might think it's scary, but it was always fun to just try to see if you could tame one down and go from there and make them kind of like a pet. Um, but yeah, bailing, we bailed all of us cousins, we'd bail hay and straw all summer long when everybody else was playing, having fun. But as far as all the things we did, I can remember being in the old barn and getting an elevator falling on an old rusty nail and ramming it through my leg and it's just like, get up, let's go. So we go back home and feel like you're gonna pass out, but you gotta keep going. So our mission trip went to a place and we come back after a mission trip and went out to check on them bailing. So I come flying over the hill with a motorcycle and normally my cousin usually drives too fast and didn't expect him not to be at the house. And there he was, so I ended up hitting the brakes and didn't get past in time to crashed in the back of the wagon, got my leg broken. So we had a guy helping us that day and he comes running out and my leg sticking totally out in the right angle. And he goes, you think it's broken? I goes, no. And so he goes and gets mom to come get me. She comes out of the car and so she gets, takes me to the hospital. And I thought on the way to town, I still remember being in Quincy at a stoplight. And I said, what are you waiting for? He goes, I'm waiting for a green arrow. I said, the light's green, let's go. But yeah, the work, work that we did with both dad and grandpa, you know, was just something that we were always taught to work hard and you don't quit till it's done. Well, I loved growing up on the farm. I thought it was great. There was always things to do. I loved the animals and I just loved the space to be able to roam and, and just enjoy nature. We always had cats, we always had dogs. Uh, Dad was always the dog lover and Mom was the kitty cat lover. Well, um, Grandpa, of course, was always busy. He's such a hard worker and he was always busy outside. He basically got up in the morning and just work, 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 only stop for lunch, come in for supper and work some more and go to bed. And so um, a way that to get to sp um, spend some special time with him was since for me the outdoor chores were kind of optional, the indoor chores were more expected with mom because um, we were girls, you know. And um, but I used to love it when dad would say, "Oh, we have a calf that we need to bucket," so I'd come down and you know we'd mix up the um, the powder with the water and and bucket the calves, and they were just so cute. Or I, I would sometimes go down while he was milking cows and help him to crank the little um, feed trough. You'd go like this and the feed would drop down. So he'd let me do certain things like that um, when he was milking. And then, of course, he taught me how to drive the tractor um, pretty young, you know, like before I had my license and stuff like that, I was driving a tractor. And I just thought that was great fun to get to drive the tractor. And then I kind of eased into being able to, he, he finally allowed me to um, drive the tractor with a baler. And of course, I thought that was fun. And then um, dating Ted, then um, 
Sometimes dad would hire Ted to help out with the square bales. So I'd be driving the tractor and Ted would be in the back bucking bales. So um, good times on the farm and um, just you know special times also with dad. We both grew up with the idea and whoever we married, we would stay together with for as long as we were alive. That's not the way people live nowadays as much. We just always knew that we loved each other very dearly, right? Right. And we were gonna stay together as long as we lived, right? Right. Although I'm sure sometimes you wish you could get somebody else. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you know, it just like I say, we were, we were very fortunate to have children uh, because you know we have friends that don't have, weren't able to have children, and uh, that would have been a very much of a disappointment for me because I loved my children, but uh, we were blessed. And every night when I go to bed, I say thank you, Lord, because we've been blessed, and uh, we've got money in the bank to pay our bills. We've got groceries in the house to eat on, and we still can drive a car and get where we want to go. And and uh, it's just wonderful to uh, be able to watch our children and their families and get to talk to them rightly and hear from them most every day or every few days anyway and and uh, know that we're just very very blessed